As a kid, I had a lot of food issues. Nobody really knew it because I looked pretty thin. Uh, but I was always playing around with food, hiding it and sneaking it. And as I got older and went through the different revolving doors of dieting, I found my way into Weight Watchers, which is a wonderful company, and discovered that uh, I wasn't alone. There were others like me that were going up and down in weight and seemed to be struggling. So that was when I decided to get a master's degree uh, in uh, social work at the mental health level. All my focus was on eating disorders at the time, and uh, that led me to go on and get the PhD. All my studies, all my research, everything I've done is related to food addiction and all the addictions. I think there's lots and lots of people like me that uh, have tried all the diets that are on the shelves of bookstores and there's some very very good ones but they never really talk about why the person is eating it's more this is what you should eat and I thought you know I know this and I know how to get out of this awful situation and I was really destined to write this book of eating is when you eat a large amount of food in a small amount of time and you are craving it like one would crave drugs or alcohol or any kind of addiction and you will do anything to get it you will hide it you'll sneak it you'll steal it um, you will do all kinds of crazy things to get this food um, and a lot of people think that that you're going to be this large person, but that's not always the case. It was in mine. There are moments I was very heavy uh, and I did lose 100 pounds, which is, you know, that's a nice little spark to the story. But that really isn't my message at all. My message is how to quiet this, this crazy um, thinking and eating and this whole journey. And so uh, binge eating disorder is actually in the DSM-5, which is where we diagnose these disorders in my psychology profession, um, my psychotherapy uh, practice. But um, I wanted to make it so it was very easily digested by anybody, not only the professionals, not only the doctors, but everybody. some pretty crazy behavior you would liken it to someone who's going to go out there and drink themselves in, into a tizzy it's very similar to that um it it is there's an irritableness there's a um there there's a lot to this disorder so i think what happens though is it's embarrassing who wants to go out there and say hey i have a food addiction it sounds awful you know, especially when I'm working with my alcoholics or my drug addicts, they'll say, wait a minute, you mean you're addicted to a Twinkie? They can't relate to it. If a bottle of Jack Daniels, that sounds rugged and tough and, and awesome, but it doesn't sound so cool when you can't stop eating. I certainly didn't know. I just thought I didn't have willpower. I thought I didn't know how to diet. I thought I didn't know how to just keep going with it. So maybe I wasn't strong enough or, you know, good enough to, to be thin for me. That was my quest to be thin. Um, so maybe, I don't know. I didn't learn that I had this problem till much later in my adult life, as far as there was a name to it. I work through spiritual recovery in my book. I work through the chemical dependency piece of it. I try to cover all of it. And, and I do give strong suggestions of ways of eating healthy, non-processed foods um, to quiet that addiction because you can. I haven't eaten those foods in 20 years. I could you know, care less about those foods. I don't even want them. Where I was that person that was you know, sneaking around to get them at one time. Take the time to figure out what you are doing. Um, not every person that has an eating disorder has a food addiction. Not every person that binge eats is a food addict. But for sure, every food addict 
binge eats. And I think that's real important because you can have someone who's wearing a lot of weight and fit the obese category and they do not have a food addiction. So I, I like to make it really clear. It's really a specific group and, and they know that there's something wrong. They may not know what it is or how to treat it, but they know. In fact, many of the doctors working with gastric bypass disorder are sending patients to me uh, after their surgeries because they're still struggling with a food addiction. Right. That doesn't go away whether you get the surgery or not. It's doing extremely well. Um, I'm selling loads in my office and um, I'm very excited about it. I have a second book coming out in November which is a spin-off of this one, but it's all about the chatter in the mind and how to quiet the negative diet chatter that we can't get rid of. So I'm very excited. It's, it's um, all, all ready to go, just running through some edits, and that one will be out soon too.